joined a, a wildlife institute of india where uh, i had to i i joined the project in which i had to document uh, moths uh, from different um, uh, elevations uh, in western himalaya it is that uh, that there are different kind of stories that we can tell uh, but we have to just choose our characters uh, wisely a postdoctoral fellow at the institute of science ms Preeta Day from Kolkata is our guest for the day. She is a former CSIR Senior Research Fellow at Wildlife Institute of India. Preeta is a moth ecologist and an avid traveler and she is a very passionate nature lover. Let's hear from Preeta on her various studies. Welcome Preeta to Uli Green. Hello, uh, I am very happy to be here uh, uh, for this platform to speak about my work and uh, um, yeah. So yeah, I'm really glad to be here. Okay, uh, now uh, can we have a brief about your background and also about how you uh, got into this a uh, very very narrow niche of moth ecology? Yeah, so um, I started off uh, after right after my masters in the zoology from the University of Calcutta. I joined a uh, wildlife institute of India where uh, I had to I I joined the project. in which i had to document the uh, moths uh, from different uh, uh, elevations uh, in western himalaya different areas of uh, western himalaya so that was my first uh, twist with moths uh, i had actually worked on butterflies on a very small project during my bachelor's but never on moths so for the first time i was sampling at night uh, doing field work at night since moths are a uh, nocturnal insect group uh but by the day time i would often uh, interact with the people uh, the local people um, uh, the villages i stayed in during my field work so they would they were very curious about uh, my work that uh, somebody is going at night into the forest and what all are they doing so when i was explaining to them about my work um, i i tried to explain to them about moths uh and clearly they did not uh, know them as much as they did uh, like for example butterflies or mammals or the birds that they see around them uh and that kind of uh, stuck with me uh, that okay there is a group of insects that these people are not aware of as much as other like their cousins uh, the butterflies so i started reading about them and i uh, found a uh, Uh, an empty niche in which i can uh, make a career out of so i chose uh, moths uh, as my study group and uh, ever since i have been uh, interested in this particular group of insects and the excitement hasn't died down so far okay the empty niche is still empty or you see more people joining in the bandwagon <laughs> more people are definitely joining in and uh, it's very encouraging and uh, heartening to see that so many people are taking interest uh, in moths uh, nowadays uh, so i mean they are starting off basically with uh, understanding the diversity around them documenting them and reporting them which is a great start uh, in uh, my opinion uh, because a group as diverse as moths which estimates to be a uh, 12000 species in india uh a start like this where people are um, pulling in their observations and documents and depositing them on online repositories like i naturalist or the moths of india website so it's 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 piling up and it's picking up pace which is which is very very encouraging for me okay uh there is a term a moth ecology i mean uh, how i mean give us some insight into this term moth ecology and how it supports ecosystem Yes, so uh, moths uh, are very important pollinators of uh, nocturnal flowers. Uh, nocturnal flowers, sorry. So nocturnal flowers, which uh, are fragrant or white in color and bloom uh, after the sunset, are usually pollinated by moths and sometimes uh, other nocturnal mammals like bats. And moths are also very important in the food chain because a lot of migratory birds uh, and, as I mentioned, bats. uh are uh, feed on them so they are very very important part of the food chain and like other insects they are important in nutrient cycling uh in a terrestrial ecosystem as also and also as decomposers so uh, so 
as a trophic group they are very important in the entire uh, food chain in a, in a terrestrial ecosystem and uh, yes so yeah. you said uh, initially that uh, the study is uh, a start uh, is it a start all over or is it a start in india mm i would say it's a start in india because um, so the kind of uh, work that i have studied which is had which has been done uh, on moths uh, has been from uh, the temperate regions mostly europe the usa and they have data of monitoring moth populations for so many years like decades so they imagine the kind of uh, Uh, interest that has already been generated uh, among insect uh, uh, on insects uh, around the around the world but in india we are still lagging behind and uh, with the given the diversity that we have i would say we have a huge potential and uh, a start like this would definitely uh, snowball into something uh, uh, which can tell us what is happening to our uh, insect populations in the long term and uh, we can also stand uh, in the global di- biodiversity map uh, of uh, insects so yeah so it's a great start for india as of now okay i mean Uh, three species that which we often hear about and uh, for a layman nothing much to differentiate between them moths insects and butterflies uh, as per your studies how are they classified and uh, how how can, how are they in one category okay so moths insects and butterflies are the same <laughs> because moths are insects butterflies are also insects and butterflies are modified uh not modified they have evolved uh from moths uh, so they are basically day flying moths so and uh, so butterflies uh and uh moths are the cousins uh, one has got more attention the other has got less attention so uh it's it's about uh, how they behave one is a diurnal taxa the butterflies uh, is are found in the daytime and moths are found in the night time so they have uh not got as much attention as butterflies but they are uh, around 10 times more diverse uh, than butterflies so when you said 12000 species of moths it's about roughly 1500 species of butterflies uh, yes okay i mean for in india we have around uh, documented i think around 1300 species of butterflies so yeah you can imagine okay yeah <laughs> so you've been uh, an evangelist of insect conservation it includes now you said that the the butterflies and moths fall into the category the broad or the macro category of insects mm-hmm. what is insect uh, conservation yes so insect conservation starts uh, at a very basic level for us uh, where we have to start documenting them you know uh, it, how can you conserve a group even if you don't even know how many species there are so the first step is to uh, a proper docu- a proper documentation of uh, insect diversity from different uh, biogeographic or areas uh, in our country so that uh, we have a data backed understanding of what is happening to the insect populations are they declining or are they not or are they uh are they getting more suited to the changing environment are they able to adapt to the changing environment because we know that the environment is changing uh and uh, climate change is real so uh, so what is happening to these uh, tiny beings uh, which are important to the food chain as much as uh, the large mammals that we focus more on so uh, what we have to do is uh, to conserve insects we have to know them first and uh, yes so that's where we are still lacking and uh, that's where our efforts should be put in to document them and start systems where uh, the proper documentation happens so it is the first step towards uh, making a policy document in terms of insect conservation where you are getting into the uh, awareness part of it Yes. creating awareness part yes it. correct okay and uh, uh, i think uh, well, somewhere you had mentioned that uh, the uh, moths are also indicators of climate change yes uh, can you touch upon that 
Yes, I mean, I would say there are indicators of uh, forest health. Uh, so, like, if you have an intact forest, if you have a degraded forest, and if you have a uh, modified forest, you will find different species occupying these three habitats because certain species are more suited to the forested habitat. Certain species are uh, able to adapt to the degradation, able, able to adapt to the modification. So if we understand the diversity in these three habitats, we uh, we can uh, understand, okay, so if we are finding this group of moths uh, in this particular habitat, it means it is not that degraded or degraded. So, so uh, because there are species specific, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, attachment to a habitat, we can uh, pinpoint out certain species to be bioindicators uh, of the forest or the habitat, a uh, habitat quality. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, you said the empty uh, niche. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you look into the social media, if you look into Instagram, if you look into Facebook, you can see a lot of youngsters uh, taking photographs and putting them up of uh, moths and insects in the yeah. Uh, social media. Yeah. So, uh, if uh, young enthusiasts want to come into come into this field, mm -hmm. uh, what will be advice to them, and how can they get involved, and how and where can they go to study more on this? Yes. So, uh, uh, so I am um, a firm believer that for start st studying moths, to knowing moths, you don't have to go far from your house. You can uh, have a light uh, at a por at the porch in your house, and you just turn it on. You will definitely find at least five species of moths around your house. So it can start right there at this scale. But if you want to know them better, you might uh, want to go into uh, into forested areas or different types of habitats. Moths are everywhere. To study them, if you are interested, uh, moths. Uh, what kind of moths? Uh, uh, what do you say, are, are more acquainted to urban habitats, you can just uh, uh, try setting up light, trap, light traps in different parts uh, of your neighborhood, like in an urban park or just near your house, and you see what kind of different species that you are getting. If you are interested in uh, understanding the diversity of moths in a particular forest, then you have to go into the forest and uh, study them. But uh, before studying them is uh, what I want to tell you or uh, tell the people out there is to uh, nurture the interest that you have. If you are just interested in documenting the different species, it's fine. It's, it's, it is what you like. But if you uh, want to delve into the science part of it, it's important that you ask a question like what interests you uh, um, for this for uh, a particular group of insects for example if you are looking at uh, the wing patterns of uh, moths and you want to understand how do these wing patterns evolve so then you pursue that question the is it is that uh, that there are different kind of stories that we can tell uh, but we have to just choose our characters uh, wisely and there is a story to tell for around you you just have to be patient, have the eyes for the tiniest details around you and uh, ask the right question if you want to pursue science. Otherwise, just enjoy watching moths around you. So what you're trying to say is uh, even uh, I mean, uh, to contribute to the study of moths, to uh, create an awareness regarding this moth ecology, you really need not be, need not be having a background in science. Not even otherwise, all. you can be part of the study. Absolutely, absolutely. If you are uh, an engineer or, uh, or an IT professional, but you still want to uh, are interested in biodiversity and you want to understand the insect biodiversity or moth diversity around you, uh, there are portals like uh, the citizen science portals like iNaturalist or a Moths of India website where you can just uh, upload your observations and uh, deposit them. There are experts uh, in the team of the websites who can identify the species for you. Uh, and your data is actually valuable uh, for, I mean, your observation is actually valuable data for the science because you are contributing to the species distribution data. So you need not be uh, uh, from a biology background, absolutely, to pursue or understand moths. Okay. In our channel, Only Green, we talk about making this world a greener place. 
uh, ha after having studied about the moth ecology, how do you think uh, we as common people can contribute to the, the sustainability of moth ecology and to get the ecosystem up? Yes, so um, so as I mentioned that uh, moths are important pollinators for the uh, night blooming flowers. Uh, maybe if you have a tiny green space in your house, you plant some of these uh, like the jasmine or the tube rose or some orchids which are po pollinated by hawk moths. You plant them around you so as to provide host plants for uh, these species. And also sometimes what we tend to do is to have a manicured lawn in our backyard let's try not to manicure our lawns we just leave it as it is i mean let them grow let the plants thrive on their own what happens is that when we stop uh trimming our lawns uh we actually provide a lot of habitat like tiny habitats for a lot of species of insects which are seasonal so they emerge in certain seasons uh, when there are a lot of dry leaves uh, in your backyard on your, or in your garden and they uh, they find their habitat in those dry leaves. If we start cleaning those or sweeping them away or brooming them away, uh, you are taking away important uh, habitats for these uh, insects. Then also, uh, if you can try not to use pesticides uh, in the plants around your uh, house, uh, I mean, if there are no economic benefits from uh, what you are sowing, uh, it's better not to use uh, pesticides. You can let the plants uh, be infected, be attacked, but they are all insects. So, so you can just uh, let the insects uh, thrive in your backyard like that. And also, if you see some green parts around your neighborhood is being cleared, cleared off, without any reason. I mean, or the municipality is coming out, coming out to clear the area. Maybe uh, you can ask your neighbors to be a bit compassionate uh, about not clearing it entirely because you're taking away a lot of habitats for the tiny insects. Uh, so these are the small uh, steps you as a citizen uh, in, a, in an urban setting can uh, do. Though, though a little bit difficult in terms of doing these things yes. in an urban setup. Yes. Having your next uh, plot I mean, thickly vegetated uh, it's a difficult proposition to, I mean, compulsorily follow, but then these are things yes. which we can try and implement. Yes, I mean, uh, like every drop makes an ocean, right? So uh, we just have to create or uh, make ourselves that drop and uh, just just take those small steps. I mean, if you, you might not, you don't know what it might snowball into. So it's, it's yeah, I'm just a very hopeful person that, people would uh, do this and take this into, into consideration. Okay. Thanks, Preeta. It's been great uh, talking to you. Very, very insightful, very informative session for maybe about the last 20 minutes. Thanks a lot and wishing you all the very best in your studies uh, and hoping to see one day uh, making policy decisions <laughs> in terms of uh, this uh, insect ecology. Looking yeah. forward to that. Thank you for your good wishes and, and I'm still a beginner in this field though I have like studied moth for more than seven years now but I, I, I learn from interacting from people and uh, enthusiasts like you and uh, I mean I take motivation from every little thing that I uh, can so thank you for having me and it's been great talking to you.